What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now we're back out doing another cold water salvage job today and we've got actually a ramp that's broke off a dock that's kind of floated away and sunk so we've got to get out here try to locate it lift it up to the surface get it floating and then see if we can drag it over to the shoreline that way the owner can actually get it replaced for them we've got a little ride to get up the lake it is cold today so we're going to jump on at it and see what we get done Right, guys as you can see this is the ramp right here it's partially submerged uh, it is tied up what we've got to do is lift it on up and then we've got to drag it across the lake over here you can see another dock system there's also another ramp that's partially submerged over there but we've got to drag it over there while it's floating get it tied up so that the uh, owner can come in and get it repaired but doesn't look like it's going to be too difficult we're running sonar real quick just to see what's underneath just so we can understand any hazards that are down there we're going to get geared up run a strap around it put a bag on it lift it and then we'll show you how we drag it All right guys, so now it's time to get to work. I'm gonna go ahead and go down and just make an observation or a little inspection dive here just to kind of see the condition of the dock system. And this will give me a better idea of where we need to hook up to it to get it to float. While my other diver is up top helping get in the bag and the uh, strap system ready, this just gives me a few minutes here to go down, inspect real quick, just see what we need, and then I can kind of come up and let him know. Basically what I'm doing here is counting down how many um, pickets there are here on the railing. Uh, so I know where the wood part of the dock stops and the metal part starts uh, because it makes it easier if we can just drop down straight there versus having to swim up down every single time like this. Um, the cool thing about this system, part of this dock system being wood, it's going to float on its own. So really the only thing we're having to lift is the metal part of the dock. So once I get down here, I can kind of see where I'm going to hook up. There's quite a bit of railing on the metal end of the dock system that we can run straps through and secure the bags to that we're going to be using. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just looking at it. And then, of course, I'm going to come back up real quick and just kind of notify my surface personnel and the other diver what we got going on. And then, of course, we're going to get some straps and we're going to go back down and hook it up. Um, anytime you do work like this, you need uh, either a common knowledge of what docks are made of and, and how they're constructed, or you need to get in the water and just look. Don't immediately take everything down with you and expect to lift this thing straight up. Uh, I would say grand total, we got about 25 to 30 feet of a dock system that we're going to have to float up. As you can clearly see, part of the, the wood, or most of the wood itself, is floating. The second half of the dock system, the metal part, if it wasn't metal, then the whole system would be floating, which would make our job a lot easier. But, once, I, like I said, going down, doing the inspection dive gave us a better idea of what we're doing here. Uh, once I get all the way back down to the metal portion, I'm going to pick a... Um, a good little area to run the strap through the other diver is going to take the strap from me and secure it on top and then of course we will come back up and get the bags to actually lift it 
But here I've reached the metal portion of the dock itself. I'm going to find a good secure point where I can slip the strap system through. And I'll do this on both sides. So imagine, if you will, if I take the strap and I lay it out flat, I'm going to make the letter U with it. And so I'm going to stick it through one end, stick it through the other end, hand it to the diver. And then, of course, he's going to just create a girth hitch on it. And that'll give us a good solid system to attach a bag to. So now that I've got that attached, I'm going to come back up and go over and get a bag. Now, these bags that we use are the same bags that we use on just about all our salvage dives. They're from a company called Subsalve, and they come in different lift capacities. The ones that we're going to be using on this dive are a thousand pound lift, which will be plenty sufficient for what we're doing. So now I'm just going to head back down. I'm going to take this bag with me and we're actually going to secure it to the strap systems that we just installed. Um, anytime you do lift, I do want to mention this real quick. Anytime you lift an object, I don't care how heavy the object is or how deep the object is. Uh, I don't care if you're using a compressor unit at top to pump the air down to it or if you're just going to be using a cylinder like we will in this video. You never want to be on top of the system that you're lifting. Whether you need to control it with ropes from the surface or maybe you're controlling it with ropes from the bottom you never want to be directly on top of the system that you're lifting because if you get too much air in it and whatever it is you're lifting uh, rapidly expands or the air rapidly expands and it shoots up then of course you're going to risk yourself with a rapid ascent and possible decompression sickness or some type of embolism but here we're going back down and we're, I'm just going to hook the bag actually I'm going to let the other diver hook the bag up to the strap system um, you want to take your time when you're doing this. We are working in extremely cold water, so obviously we're bundled up in our dry suits. We both have dry gloves on, and we're trying to manipulate a shackle, if you will, with a bolt that goes through it with really thick gloves and zero dexterity. So you want to take your time because the last thing you want to do is lose the bolt. If we were to happen to lose the bolt here, then, of course, this bag would be uh, inoperable for us in any way. But we're just taking our time, getting the bag attached, uh, making sure everything's secure and then of course we're going to adjust that system as well so that the bag stays centered on the dock. I don't want it shifting around and sliding around in different spots. But now that we got that, my other diver is going to swim over and get the cylinder that we're using. I get asked all the time too, you know, what type of cylinders. This is just an old steel 72 that we use for salvage work. Uh, I've got a whole fleet of steel 72s that we use for that. You could use an 80, you could use a 100, because we are basically here at the surface. I think the deepest part here is about 10 foot. So, you know, we're basically at the surface, so it doesn't really matter. But depending on how deep you are and how much air supply you need uh, to lift something you need to be able to do the math on that and we may have to use larger cylinders depending on what we're lifting and how deep we are the math is basically the same as what you would use for uh, gas supply needs in say your deep diver course so if you're planning or say in a cavern course or a cave course you need to be able to um, do the math to determine what your gas supply needs are we do the same thing here and in a search and recovery class that is something that we're going to do as well but here as you can see i've got the bag hooked to the cylinder i'm filling the bag now and you should start to see this dock system slowly start to pop up as i said earlier in the video the wood part of the dock as you can see it is floating it's not going to sink so all that we're lifting here of course is the metal section of the dock and we're going to end up using two uh, bags on this because we're going to put one right where the dock connects to um, the wood as well and that way it keeps it flat and we don't run the risk of it breaking as we're towing it across the channel I want to make another note too if you remember earlier when I mentioned that we were running sonar here that was for two reasons one we wanted to know what was on the bottom just for our safety if there was any type of entanglement hazards uh, or anything that we should be concerned with the other reason of course was we wanted to know what was on the bottom once we have this dock system floating we're gonna to have to actually drag it across the cove here and which you'll see here shortly and we needed to know what the depth of the cove was we also needed to see um, the structure itself that we're lifting the dock itself so that we knew how it was positioned in the water 
so that uh, we knew the path to take because let's say it's sticking six or seven foot down in the water and of course the shallowest part of the cove may be three or four foot well obviously we're not going to be able to drag this dock system all the way across so with that being said by running sonar in the beginning it gave us a good idea of exactly what we needed to do um, or how high we needed to get this dock system up out of the water to make the tow part of it even more successful but here we're actually going down we're going to go ahead and take the strap for the second bag and we're just going to do the exact same thing that we did on the first part uh, we're going to take it down we're going to find a good place to uh, secure the strap we're going to stretch it all the way through the dock system come back girth hitch on top and then of course we will take a secondary bag down and actually hook it up as well but if you can't tell already, the visibility is not that great. We can see what we're doing directly up against it, but uh, trying to determine the best place to put it can be difficult, especially if you're working in limited visibility. And another thing that you'll notice too is the communication port. Now, or the communication problems that we come across. Uh, in this particular situation, a full face mask and a comm unit would have been great for me and the other diver. And if we would have been any deeper than what we were on this dive, then yeah we would have chose to go with full face mask and comm units but the other diver that i'm diving with we dive together re religiously so we understand what we're doing underwater one of the ways that we do that of course is a good thorough briefing on top before we ever get in um, the company that hired us to lift this they gave us a pretty good briefing of what the dock looked like and not to mention the fact that they had two dock systems that both broke free we were able to see one of them that they were able to pull back in so we had a good idea of what this dock system looked like so even though we're working basically in limited vias or might as well say no vias at this this point uh, we had a pretty good idea of where to hook the straps what we needed to do with it so the comms once again in this situation wasn't that big a deal but we should be getting uh, pretty well done here with the strap system and then of course we will come back up to the surface and get the secondary bag as well once again this is another thousand pound bag from sub -Salve. i really like the sub -Salve bags uh, i've used them for many many years uh, warranties on them are great and yes i have tore some of these bags up but it's pretty easy to repair them um, and they're just an all-around great company to use they are a staple in the search and recovery and salvage field as well but now that I've got the second bag, this next part's going to go pretty quick. All we're going to do is drop down, hook it up, throw the cylinder to it, pump it up with air as well, and the back half or the back part of the dock system should just float up pretty easily. But as I go down here, I'm just going to meet up with the other diver. I'm going to take the shackle uh, that's on the bottom of the bag once again, hook it directly to the straps as he's kind of holding in place, and then of course the rest of it's just throwing air to the bag and uh, bringing it up. But here you can see we are hooking the shackle up. It's not a very difficult job, but like I said, with zero dexterity, thick, thick dry gloves because it is cold, um, you want to take your time. Once again, if we used to lose the boat here, then we would kind of be up a creek without a paddle, if you will. But we're taking our time, putting the boat in, making sure everything's good and secure. Once again, we want to make sure that that strap system is exactly where it needs to be. I don't want to start lifting this back and it shift and actually roll this dock system. One of the reasons that we're actually going to keep this dock system upside down is so that when the uh, boom truck that they're going to get to pull it out of the water, once it gets there, then they can actually get it positioned exactly where it is. Um, and we don't want to stress or damage any of the railing, especially the wood part of the railing itself. So that's one of the reasons we're hooking them up the way that we are. But we should be getting done here. Uh, there I can see the, the actual hose to, to the uh, cylinder. And of course you can see the, the bag is already inflated and it's gonna be brought up. But we're gonna get this thing floating and then I'll show you here at the end how we're gonna tow it across. Basically we're just gonna use the boat we're going to tie it to the bow and anytime that you're towing stuff underwater sometimes it's better to actually tow it backwards than actually towing it forwards it gives you a little bit better control of your vessel or the boat but we should be getting finished up here soon and you'll see it go across
guys so we are back at the shop and it is a whole lot warmer inside today than it is outside and we had a very successful dive we was able to lift the dock system up we actually got two bags placed on it and we was able to drag it across the cove area and then of course we got it tied up next to the ramp area where they'll have to reinstall it all they've got to do is get a boom truck down there they're going to lift it up they're going to flip it over and then reinstall it with new floats under but guys i really hope you enjoyed today's video if you did give me a big thumbs up definitely share it if you got any questions please put it down in the comment section below and i'll try to answer it the best I can. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.